Oh, do you think you can win me over by your perfect little facial features? Damn, am I shallow? For a long time, people wanted Trax in the War for Cybertron toy line, since some were disappointed that he didn't win the first fan vote in Siege. But for a while, rumors came out that the character is coming, and in Kingdom, Trax got his first mainline toy since Reveal the Shields. He's completely full of himself, having to praise his good looks and remind everyone on how entirely perfect he is. Even his alt mode is the definition of absolute elegance. Well, I can't really argue with that though. The question is, will his good looks win him over in the figure? Trax transforms into a car very similar to his on-screen Chevrolet Corvette C3. Probably inaccurate due to licensing issues as the original Transformers were more based on real life cars. But I mean, it's Trax. He still has to have that swag. Yes, I said that word because it's accurate. The vehicle is certainly slim, but you can tell the proportions are based on the Corvette. With its swift yet curvy shapes and the design on the front, I can tell what it wants to be. Looking at the brake lights, that's a little off, even without the obnoxious white fins hiding as well as a fat man behind a stop sign pole. Part of me wants the yellow on the hood print. It's not something from the cartoon, but it's always made the toys interesting. However, rather than bright and exciting, the red doesn't deter from the smoothness, especially since that deep blue is looking pretty good like the night on a calm ocean. What's really appreciated is the painted rims, even if it's a little awkward that the front ones are clipped and the back isn't. You can port the weapons on the side or on the back, so I do like the shape and blue that'll look good night or day, however, looking good doesn't mean it feels good. This is a clear plastic nightmare, most of the canopy and back consist entirely of it, and the front legs aren't just hard to clip into the sides on top, but to unlock it gives me absolute anxiety. It's concerning considering the car can break at any point. It's so incredibly tight that I had to sand down a few tabs just to get it to function properly. There's a few joints within the canopy attached to the front windshield that are pretty tight, making me worried it'll strain. And who decided to make the windshield itself pop in the front? It feels so terrible. This shouldn't be clear plastic to begin with. I'd prefer solid windows painted over, but this was just flawed engineering regardless. There's also a tab that holds the arm in place, and it's a little too tight as well. Not only that, the side sides of the vehicle open up a bit too far. I tried to push them in, but they just won't work. It makes me think the Action Master had something going for it. However, there's one ridiculous aspect they had to get right. It's the hover flight car. Yes, this is a thing. With the guns on top, the arms, fins, and wings deployed, this is a feature that puts tracks on the map. I mean, imagine a flying car could probably duke out with the DeLorean. I'm not sure if the arms or the wheels are the turbines, or even both for that matter. Honestly, this is probably worth it. At least I don't have to open up the entire top. That would stink. Those are such tiny wings, especially compared to the Reveal the Shields toy that incorporated the doors. But until flying cars are on the market, this is ridiculous enough to get away with it. But but where's the flight stand port? It's a bird! It's a plane! No! It's a modified Corvette C3! With the arms out, you can plug weapons to the side. With the back porthole, you can add a blast effect. And with the shoulder portholes, you can add more for a larger boost. It is missing the front gunner piece, but swooshing this around makes me forget so many issues as is. It is certainly bad for a toy, not entirely for the alt mode or flight mode it turns into. It's transforming the car is the problem. Please keep your attention and be careful if you need to modify it. However, the egotistic machine certainly looks nice. Robot mode. Trax again looks the part. He seems to have the essentials and the right colors with details distinct to him, but the feel of the figure certainly breaks down, as quality control and engineering issues absolutely demolish any joy from it. Standing there, he looks fine like a well-dressed mannequin. Shoulders might seem a bit wide, but it's okay. The gray paint seems a little thick, but it does give it a pleasant, clean shine. <coughs> There's a surprising amount of little sculpted details. In addition, I love the yellow and red painted details in the arm. Yeah, he has a fake windshield, but 
looking at the reveal the shields toy, I'm personally glad it's half the size. I don't mind the wings on the arms, making me scuff at Wheeljack's poor excuse. I would like to see more colors in the legs, but trust me, that's the least of our worries. With legs as structurally sound as a skyscraper where the first floor is propped up by beat up playing cards. There's a few fixes, Larkin's Lair did a video on the topic, but even then, this is disastrous. Hasbro, pro tip, legs support things. The tab is too short, there's some distance between the side panel, and it's already sorta of loose. This panel is the only thing attached to the feet, so it's an utter Artemis foul. There's also a weird gap, but considering what they're doing, it's whatever. Sadly, that's just the major issue. The arms are hollow, which I wouldn't care if not for the obvious hole like he got shot. The back kibble's pretty obnoxious, but given the character, that's probably the point. One thing I'll absolutely praise them on is the head. The thick white paint surprisingly outlines a lot of the detail on the helmet. The red face is truly handsome, clean, with pure blue eyes. I would love him if he didn't come with so much baggage. Did someone say, ARTICULATION! Ball jointed head, shoulders out and in, forward and back rotation below, elbow bend, waist rotation, hips out and in, forward and back rotation below, knee bend, and ball joint foot. Again, he looks okay, but the minute you touch him, he crumbles into an unfun mess. I didn't even mention the loose hips, it's really a shame. I want to like him, but I know those pins on the shoulders won't stay shiny. Let's take a look at the accessories. He's got a pistol blaster in black that's more of a basic weapon, and a two-sided single-piece set of rockets. You can combine them, but these are intended to attach over the head. So, was the backpack worth it? There's portholes on the useless feet, side of the legs, hands, side of the arms, top of the shoulders, and top of the backpack, as well as blast ports all over. But gee, the weight of a weaponizer on top of this? That's a disaster in the making. <laughs> Spoken. So, if it wasn't obvious, I'm not optimistic about this figure. I could have forgiven certain things, but it really is clear that either the designers or how they test the models at Hasbro needs to be reevaluated. Because this wave certainly has some misses, tracks included. I think I just prefer the proportions on this over his previous figure. I wasn't always big on that toy, but structurally, this isn't good. It fails at being an interactive figure, and they really shouldn't have rushed him. I still got it, but there's no excuse for some of the things on him. Is it bad that the Funko Pop is probably better? All Spark TV. Now that's just Prime.